Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Samsung One UI running on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and also the S9 and the S9 Plus. Even though we're using a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 in this video, the same things apply to the S9 and the S9 Plus if you happen to own one. So let's dive in and talk about the One UI. I've been using it for a couple months now, and I just want to talk about some of the things I want to see changed and also the things that I like. So it's going to be an overview and also a list of things I wish uh, they change. Now, before we dive in, if you do own a smartphone, make sure to hit that subscribe button to subscribe to Saki Tech. And of course, make sure to click that notifications bell icon as well to make sure you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. Now, the very first thing I'm going to talk about is if we go into the app drawer by swiping down, uh, I'm sorry, swiping up, uh, it's going to give you the Finder search on the top. Now, as you know, the whole point of the One UI is to be able to use it with one hand most of the time. So if I do go to the settings, uh, let's just go to the settings for a second. Uh, if I went to uh, display, if I want, was using the phone with one hand, and if I want to bring this thing down, I can just do it like that. So that's the one-handed use, easy to access with your thumb. So that's great. And again, if you go into the text messages over here, if you were trying to use anything with one hand, everything is down on your level so you can reach them with your thumb, even to uh, access your contacts or go into conversations. But when you go into the, um, uh, the app drawer to be able to use the finder, the finder is all the way at the top. So if I was holding the phone like this, I would have to reach all the way to the top, tap on this and then search what I want to search. So what I would like to see happen is either when you pull it up, the keyboard pops up as well, or uh, the finder search comes to the bottom. So when I tap it, it can actually allow me to do a search really quickly. So if I were, if this was down here, I could just tap it with my thumb, oops, tap it with my thumb over here, and then start searching whatever I needed to do. All right, so that would be a good change if they did it. So that's one thing I do want to see changed. Now, the other thing that I really like is the dark mode. I've been using that a lot. Now just put it up back up to the regular mode just for this video because the white looks better. But if I go to the settings and if I go into display and if I enable the night mode, I keep calling it the dark mode, but it's called the night mode. I absolutely love it because it gives you this uh, easy on the eyes night mode look. So which applies to a lot of the uh, built-in Samsung apps. So if I pull down the notifications uh, panel and the quick controls over here, it's all uh, in the night mode setting. And if I go to the settings, same thing, everything is night mode. Uh, and if, even if I go to the apps uh, that are Samsung apps, you are going to see that nice and cool night mode. So if I go to the, um, let's tap in a calculator over here. Uh, even if you go to the calendar, boom, you've got the night mode, okay? And if I go to the, um, let me go back here, to the calculator, uh, boom, you've got the night mode, all right? Now, if I disable the night mode, let me go back here just to show you guys the differences. Go to display, disable it. Now, if I go back into the uh, calculator, that's what you get. Uh, if I go back into the calendar, that's what you get. And if I go back into text messages, uh, that's what you get, okay? So that's a big difference. It gives you two modes to experience your smartphone. And it's great that apps like YouTube have their own dark mode, so uh, it feels like a bigger system than just Samsung. So another thing that I like with the whole interface is, of course, Samsung has a lot of customization features. Uh, one thing I don't like that they took away, uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to show right now, but if you go into the multitasking pane by tapping this button, you do have this nice, cool look with some new features. For example, I can tap on one of these apps and bring up some extra options, such as being able to do the pop-up view. So I can do the pop-up view on the calendar. Uh, or if I go back here, tap it again, I can do the split screen from here, which is also great, okay? It's very easy to activate the screen on multi-tasking uh, now. But there's one thing that they have taken away. So if you have a Note uh, 8, Note 9, S9, or an S9 Plus right now, and if you tap this button, uh, you'll see a bunch of cards stacked on, on top of each other. But then on the top, you can tap this button and you can go from the uh, tab view to the list view, which gives you a list of all the current running windows over here uh, 
in a single row. So you could have the messages, calendar, and they all have their own row. Now that option has gone as well, and that's something I wish Samsung brings back to the table because it's really something that I use all the time. I, the way, I, I like the way it looks. Now I'm not saying I don't like this. This is absolutely fantastic, but it's the only option given to me, and I'm used to having multiple options with the Samsung uh, smartphones. It's nice to spice things up every now and then to have a better look. Anyway, let's move on and talk about one more thing. So the other thing I want to talk about is the navigation bar at the bottom. If you go to the settings, and if I go to the display, and if I go over to the navigation bar, you have a couple options. Now you can have navigation buttons, uh, which is the way I like it, or you can have full screen gestures. Now if I tap on this one, the buttons disappear, and then you can go home by swiping up, uh, bring up the multitasking pane by tapping this, uh, the, the, the app tray, I mean, and then if you were in a uh, menu item or any anywhere on a website, whatever, you want to go back, you just swipe up, okay? So it's easy to use. I've been used to it. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. I can go back easily, go home, bring it up, boom. I just like buttons for some reason, all right? So what I do is I enable the um, <clears throat> navigations and navigation buttons, okay? So this is something uh, I simply happen to like. And of course, this is an existing option. You can change the button order. So if you tap this, you swap the back and the recents button, all right, which is great. I like it this way. If you enable this one, this option uh, still works. So now I can go home like this, bring up the app tray, and then go back like that, okay? I just prefer this one over here with the buttons enabled. But if you go back into those settings, uh, you'll see that it's been truncated a little bit. And again, this is the beta, so we might get more. But if you go to the navigation bar, uh, I'm unable to change the color of my navigation bar, which is uh, right now on the Android 8 and option. Okay, so hopefully they change that as well. Now, one more thing I really like, uh, it's a new mode. Uh, when you press and hold the button, uh, it gives you the lockdown mode. I'm going to show you what that does. Let me show you how to enable it. So normally when you press and hold the power button, you get only three options, power, restart, emergency. Now you got the lockdown mode. So if I go into the settings, and if I go into the uh, lock screen over here, uh, oops, right here, I go into the uh, secure lock settings, and at the bottom you've got the show lockdown option. So when you lock your phone using this option, it disables everything, but only keeps the pin number enabled. So you cannot use your face ID, your fingerprints, you cannot see notifications on the lock screen, you cannot use smart lock and all that stuff to unlock your phone or look at your phone, you will see nothing and all you can use is uh, your pin number to unlock your smartphone. Let me show you what, what that means. So if I turn off the screen and turn it on, uh, I have the face ID and the uh, iris scanner that I can, uh, I can use. By the way, if you tap on the clock, it gives you a little clock icon, just so you know. Uh, but this is allowing me to use my face, my irises, my fingerprint to actually log into the phone. Let me just put my pin number in. But if I were to go into the uh, lockdown option and enable that, and if I turn off the, I mean, uh, press and hold the power button and tap on lockdown, it is going to lock my screen, but all the notifications are gone. Cannot use face ID. It's not even giving me the option. Cannot use fingerprint. All I can do is swipe up and put in my pin number. So that's what the lockdown mode is all about. Let me put my pin. So that's just a new option that I happen to like. Uh, one more thing I like is if you go to the settings and if you go into the device care, okay? Uh, if you tap on the button on the top here, you have the option for auto restart. Now auto restart is already in the Note 8, Note 9, S9, S9 Plus, even the S8, but it's a little bit different. Now normally what you can do with the old restart mode is you can only pick one day a week and a time to automatically restart your phone just like you would restart a PC to make it more uh, fresh and robust. With the new auto restart, once you enable it, you can pick every single day and you can have the phone restart at a given time, uh, which might be a better option than doing it once a week. So maybe not every day, but I can do it on a Sunday, and maybe I can do it on a Friday at 3 a.m., and that just makes sure that your phone runs in optimum condition. Now this option, again, is already available in the old versions, but you can only pick one day per week. Now you can pick 
seven days a week if you so desire. Okay, so let me just turn that off. And that's another thing that I really enjoyed. Yeah, but that's it in this video. I'm not going to go into full details. I do have other videos that go into the full details of the One UI. I go over the edge screen, how it looks like. You have this new look when you tap this button. Again, one-handed access to all these edge panels if you so desire. Uh, but I mean, just uh, look for the other videos. I'm going to drop links here and there. But this is these are some of the things I like and also I wish were changed in the One UI with the official version being released soon which is most likely going to happen towards the end of January for the S9 and the S9 Plus, and most likely February uh, for the Note 9. It did get pushed back as far as I know. Uh, and that's only for the U.S., uh, for the United States. I'm not sure about the other countries. Just can't keep track of every single thing uh, on the planet. All right? Well, thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech. Give this video a thumbs up. And, of course, have a fantastic day.